There it is. I'm recording. This is really weird to, to be talking to a camera. Uh, no one's around. I'm, I'm alone in my basement. But I, I really hope that this is something that that works in the place of us actually being able to meet together in one place. Um, we're in a weird place in time. This is a weird situation. I feel weird doing a video um, of a Bible study. I'm going to do my best to keep it short. Uh, we are going to continue going on in our in our study of Daniel. It's this book. I don't have a microphone yet. I'm sorry if you hear the camera clicking as it's, as it's doing its thing. Um, I'll try to talk over it until we can fix it for later. Uh, but we're going to be in lesson five of this book. I know you don't have it uh, with you because it was left at the church. And so I'm going to read everything that you need to know. Just pause the video if you need to write down something that I said. I'm going to ask a lot of questions uh, at points, and it's going to go really fast. I'm going to do that because I know you can pause the video uh, to actually write your answers or think about or meditate what your responses should be. Um, so I'm, going to, I'm just going to do a brief on this chapter. Uh, we already are pretty familiar with it. I don't want to spend a lot of time talking to the, the camera. Uh, so here we go, lesson five. It's titled, Doing Right No Matter What. Uh, but before we get started, I want to start with a little bit of reflection on last week, uh, which was some stuff on Daniel 5. It was the writing on the wall. Uh, so here's your question. Um, who is someone you admire for doing the right thing even when it was difficult to do so? What did you learn about integrity from that person? All right, so jumping right into lesson five, uh, we're going to be in chapter six of Daniel. Uh, here's your context. Uh, the last time that we were talking about this book, uh, we had the handwriting on the wall, and we had learned about uh, the overthrowing of one king to another, um, and right now we have a new one that's coming up and taking power. Um, this is going to be a king by the name of Darius. Uh, this is going to be after the overthrow of Nebuchadnezzar and, and the guy that follow up after him. And so there's a whole new kingdom in play. And Daniel is still like one of the top-notch guys. Um, the new king and the, the new empire has recognized him as being intelligent and provident and, and they have respect for him and they want to you know, appoint him and make him even higher. Uh, we learned that Darius wants him to even become one of the top, if not like the acting ruler over the whole kingdom. Uh, just because of what we've seen in Daniel before, he, he knows what he's doing, he's a, he's a good governor, and so he's, he's on this like really fast path up. Um, but everybody that's in competition with them isn't very thrilled about that. And so they set the stage uh, for Daniel to fail in front of the king. Uh, now, what I want you to do now is actually go and read Daniel chapter 6, verses 6 through 24. Uh, this is going to be a story that you're going to recognize. It's going to be pretty familiar to you, you think. Uh, but I want you to go ahead and read it anyway. Uh, so you can just pause the video and do that. Uh, Daniel 6, verse 6 through 24. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read some of the exploration questions for you. Uh, you can at your own leisure answer these, uh, spend as much or little time as you want. But what is important is that uh, you still think about it. Uh, you, you still make an effort to understand how this passage uh, applies to you, why it was important enough for God to preserve it through history. Um, and, and some of these questions, I think, can help reveal that but you gotta be serious about how you answer them. Uh, what did the administrators and satraps, or why did the administrators and satraps wanna find a reason to accuse Daniel? Um, why do you think King Darius agreed to follow their advice? How did Daniel respond when he learned of the king's edict? What do you think enabled Daniel to take his stand for God? What does the fact that King Darius made every effort until sundown to save Daniel say about Daniel's character and reputation? What were the consequences for the, man, for the men who tried to eliminate Daniel as a rival? I'm going to read this inspiration portion. It's, it's only a couple paragraphs, so it'll be pretty quick, but it's, it's good stuff. Um, God has thrown life jackets to every generation. Look at Daniel in the lion's den. Daniel was about to be swallowed, flat on his back with the lion's faces so close he can smell their breath. The biggest one puts a paw on Daniel's chest and leans down to take the first bite nothing. 
Uh, instead of a chomp, there is a bump, and Daniel looks down and sees the nose of another lion rubbing against his belly. The lion's lips are snarling, but his mouth isn't opening. That's when Daniel hears this snickering in the corner. He, he doesn't know who the fellow is, but he sure is bright, and he sure is having fun. Um, in his hands is a roll of bailing wire, and on his face is one of those gotcha while you weren't watching expressions. So I'll show you the stories in the Bible, one near-death experience after another, and just when the neck is on the chopping block, just when the noose is around the neck, the cavalry comes. Just like the angels pounding on Lot's door in Genesis 19, the whirlwind speaks to Job's hurt, that's Job 38 through 42. The Jordan purges Naaman's plague, 2 Kings 5, and an angel appears in Peter's cell, Acts 12. God's efforts are strongest when our efforts are useless. I have five more questions, and I'm going to read a little bit more out of this book for you. Uh, these are reaction questions, so, so pause for a moment and actually uh, think, think about these. Write them down if you, if you have a journal. I, I hope that you do. Um, what are some of the life jackets that God has thrown to you in your life? What does this reveal about the way God intervenes in his children's lives? What are some examples of times that you took a stand for God when it was unpopular to do so? What are some examples of times you took a stand for God when it was risky to do so? How have you seen God come through when you chose to be faithful to Him? How has your example helped others who are also wrestling with taking a stand for God? Here are the life lessons uh, from the book. When we look at Daniel's life, we find he always put the law of his heavenly king first, even when that meant violating the law of his earthly king. So it is no surprise to find that when Daniel learned of the law that no one could worship anyone other than King Darius, he got down on his knees and prayed, giving thanks to his God just as he had done before. Daniel 6, 10. A lifetime of cultivating such holy habits taught Daniel that he could always trust in God and rely on his faithfulness. And a lifetime of cultivating holy habits will yield the same for us. As we learn to be obedient to God in the little things, we find he gives us the strength to be obedient to him in the big things, even if that means facing down our own den of lions. Almost to the end here, um, we, we have a devotional prayer. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pray. You can pray with me. Um, Father, we are faced with so many choices each day, and often we choose the path of least resistance instead of obeying you. Teach us to trust you in every situation and look to you for guidance. We want to serve you today and always in every decision we make. I have one final thought. Uh, from lesson five. Uh, th this is a journaling exercise. I mean, you can tell just by the book. It should take you a minute. Um, what is one area of your life in which you wish to develop greater personal integrity? Think about that seriously. Um, I, I wanted to be more humorous and tell more jokes and, and be more lighthearted in this video. Um, it's, it's past 10 o'clock at night on Saturday. Uh, I, I'm sorry, you're, you're just going to have to settle for a really, really bad dad joke. Um, give, give, me just, give me just a second. You, you sk skip ahead like five seconds. Okay. I hope you're ready for this one. What cheese can never be yours. Nacho cheese.